Hey everyone, uh, welcome this afternoon. Uh, today, uh, my guests are back again. Two years ago, Jatila did his first uh, book signing event here back in July 2017, and less two years later, he's back again. But new and improved with Ali, his wife as well. That's right. But let me tell you a little bit about the book and a little bit about um, the authors there. The book is 101 Epic Dishes. Um, which is part of the 101 series uh, that they seem to be working on right now. But let me tell you a little bit about Jet and Allie. Allie um, is the wife, mother. The boss. She wears, the, and the boss, the many titles uh, there in the household there, as well as the coordinator for and co-writer of the book, and also business par yep, par partner right. as well. Um, as they co-authored this book, she brings together 15 years as a pastry chef and, um, and her teaching uh, cooking experience. Um, she's appeared on many of the Food Network shows like Guy's Grocery Games, Cutthroat Kitchen. I'm sure you guys might have seen the episode the other day on KTLA Channel 5. Um, and then, of course, Jet, Chef Jet Tila, ambassador, food ambassador of Thailand. Uh, I, I'm sure if you go on the TV Food Network, within an hour, one of his shows will pop up at any time, but I've known Jed actually before he came really big and famous. Years. It's been about, yeah, yeah it's been years. over 20 years yeah. now from Bangkok market to procuring produce yeah. to Thai tours and yeah. whatnot. He's come a long way. I've done nothing. He's the one that actually is. No, no way, man. You're busier. Anyway, um, so anyway, as you've seen him co host on the uh, Food Network, the Iron Chef America. Uh, judge on Cutthroat Kitchen with Alton Brown on Today, Chopped, and Beat Bobby Flay. Did you beat Bobby Flay, by the way? We have beaten Bobby Flay. Yeah. They yeah. have beaten. Someone has beaten Bobby Flay. Well, he, they really don't need any introduction. In excitement for the 101 Epic Dishes, um, Ali and Chef Jack. Thank you so much. All right. Wow. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Um, so, first of all, I'd like to give a huge hand to the team of Melissa's here. Um, God, Robert, yeah. uh, Ida, Joe, Sharon, thank you for always uh, being a friend to us. Uh, I'll, I'll do the quick two minutes. We have a little bit of time. Uh, you guys, right? And um, since you're not on microphone, we're going we're gonna to have a lot of time for Q&A later. But this is the portion that's going out to Hi, hi Media, Interweb Land. How's it going hi. out there, YouTube? Um, so... My, fa my family started the first Thai grocery store. We also started, started the first Thai produce company. And 20 years ago, I get a call from uh, uh, folks at Melissa's. And they're like, hey, we're putting together this group. I think it was H-E-B. Would you confirm or deny? Yeah. It was, it was, it was one of those big grocery retail chains. Um, confirm or deny. <laughs> yeah. National grocery retail chains. And they wanted to push into Asian produce. And uh, they invited this young punk kid. Uh, I was probably like 20 years old at that time. I'm 44 now, so it gives you uh, an idea of how long ago. And we just we did this deep dive into Asian cooking, uh, and we did a Thai town tour. And what I what I really learned from that, uh, Robert doesn't realize, I probably doesn't realize, that was my first foray into consulting. I didn't know that I was consulting. Does that make sense? When you take an expert and you take someone into your world, and then you start to realize all these really phenomenal companies learn to monetize that. I'm like, oh, that's how people make money. I get it. So thank you for being one of the first company, like, you know, um, organizations and partners to teach me how to really kind of, um, you know, expand as a businessman. There you go. Boring Melissa story, but it's so important to my life anyway. Um, so anyway, um, I think a lot of you have watched uh, some of the stuff on TV. What I love about this format is there are some of you in this room that have known me. Well, A, my mom my whole life, yeah. right? Uh, we have Nancy, Andy, Barbara. Uh, that's the 20-year club. Uh, Aaliyah, Jerry, you're in the 20-year club. Aaliyah's in the probably 15-year club. You guys have known me before I was on television, right? And it's, it, it's people like you that have kept me humble over the years. Does you that get make matching sense? jackets when you get yeah. to the 20-year yeah. club. Yeah, it's like Saturday Night Live. <laughs> When you host five times, so I'm gonna make 20 year jackets, 15 year jackets, and we have some 10 year jackets in here. Uh, I guess the point of that story is, I still don't think, I don't walk through life thinking that, oh man, I'm on TV. People are gonna recognize me. So, uh, oh, you're in, the, you're in the 15 year club. Judy's in the 15 year club. We took, so Judy, I met Judy 
and Ali separately, but in the same context. I was teaching cooking classes at Sir Latab over 10 years ago. And, uh, and so if you forgive me if I'm not like, hey, what's going on there, guys? Let me take a picture with me. So uh, I'm the same dude that I, I've been for the last 25 years. So that's the point of that. Ali Tila, I'm going to serve as Ali's partner, but also interviewer, right? This, um, I think we should, I've spoken long enough. I want to give you guys a story of how we got here today as a couple, right? We're going to leave out all the gory, steamy details, (laughs) unless you want to know. Unless it's in the context of cooking, steamy. There you go, exactly. They want to know the real housewife stories. Anyway, um, but Ali. That'd be like so boring. We're like at home in our sweats, like, you know. We are not boring. Last week, (laughs) Ali was, was, oh, by a little secret to this uh, internet land in this land. Ali last week was in New York co-hosting Beat Bobby Flay with me. And that'll be on uh, later this, like probably next year. So that's not boring. I think who would want want to go and host Beat Bobby Flay? Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So um, Ali, why don't you tell us about yourself? Because I've been in food my whole life, but this is kind of newer to you. Want to give us some fun cliff notes about your life and how you got here? Sure. So I've always loved cooking, particularly baking, you know, like what little kid doesn't love cooking and baking. And, you know, my mom was a single mom, so she'd work really long hours and I'd be at home like eight years old. I had this Mickey Mouse cookbook. It was awesome. I still have it. (laughs) And I'd be at eight years old making custards in a water bath in the oven, you know. So I think I've always really enjoyed cooking, which is how Jet and I met. Specifically... Specifically, the same the same knife skills class at Sir Latab. At Sir Latab. So I would go with my mom and take cooking classes, and we took a whole bunch of classes from Jet. And of course, my mom like loves Jet. Like it's so funny. I'm like a, I feel like a trophy husband to your mom. It's true. It's kind of weird, but it's kind of true. But though. what did you do for a living? I think that's also I found it fascinating. So what did you do for for a living the last? Before culinary, what did you do for the last 20 years? Okay, so for 15 years, I was a special ed teacher for LA Unified. Um, so I was in education for a long time. And then after our daughter was born, I started working with Jet full time, running the business and kind of doing like anything that needed to be done. So I would do the books and I would do the invoicing, which yeah. I still do. <laughs> um, and I would edit media content for him and do social media for him and, you know, just basically anything that needed to be done. So it's been such an interesting learning experience for me to see not just the culinary field, but everything that comes along with it, because there's so much media around it now with the advent of Food Network and you know, and then watching TV and watching how they make it behind the scenes, I would go on set with him and it's just really fascinating. So at one point he said, you know, you love pastry, you love baking. Why don't you go to pastry school? So a few years ago, I decided I was going to go to pastry school and I did. And it was amazing. So I love it even more now. Yeah. Um, excellent. So, um, and then I then, started staging at Redbird yeah. downtown and Neil getting Fraser, some, some restaurant experience, yeah. um, which was an awesome experience. Yeah. Well. The irony is I worked for Neil 20 years ago and then Ali worked for Neil like two years ago. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> anyway, um, you know what? And I know, uh, those of you in YouTube land can't hear us. Um, but again, we try to keep it super conversational. So there's something that's burning in your mind. I'll repeat the question as the interviewer if it comes from the audience. Does that sound good? Um, what is, 101. This book was not supposed to be a technique book. Right. Right? We started writing this book as a kid's book. Right? We were new parents. Uh, Maya was at that time was probably three or four. Bren was like one. Yeah, four. Something yeah. Like that. yeah. And uh, I had this crazy, dumb idea that we should write a cookbook for kids because I thought there was a big market. Well, first, yeah. I think it's a brilliant idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it is a good idea, if, if, but it wasn't our voice. Right. We were writing this book, and Allie was handling pastries, and we kept going back to it and going, it doesn't sound like a kid's book. Mm-hmm. It is not going to talk to young kids, especially those kids that are, like, you know, super interested in cooking. So that morph, and we're about halfway through writing this book, and I was like, Allie, we can't write this book. We need to switch. And what was your reaction? And, no, oh, you can't change it now. <laughs> and personality-wise, I'm very like seat of my pants. Uh, you know, I've got 20 projects. I'm that guy that's like, 
let's go to the moon. And Allie's like, you're crazy. It's not possible. <laughs> and I'm like, we're going to find a way. And uh, so, yeah, it was a little stressful, no? The, well, the I mean, pivot. when you have to then start rewriting things and starting from scratch in some places, it's a challenge, you yeah. know? And, and your deadline hasn't moved. <laughs> you're right. just we had the same deadline. We had one year to write this book. And about yeah. six months in, we're like, it's not going to work. And then, then but the great part this, about this book, though, yeah. is that you can still use it not with young kids, but with that's you know, what I was trying to tell you a year ago. Out. That's exactly my point. Anyway, is any burning questions? I will repeat them for the audience. Yes, yeah. So the question is to finish that, yeah. yeah. So your Kira is asking, Do you have to go to the editor? The, we work with a, at a, a publishing house called Page Street, and they're a smaller editor. We're very comfortable with them. We, we want to work with a smaller custom house for that reason. We were all collaborating the entire process, and we were all coming to our weekly meetings and going, this doesn't feel right. So it was a choice with the editor, mm -hmm. right? It was, a, it was a very difficult choice midway through. So, so that's what happened. Yeah, we work really well with this publisher and they really kind of let us do the things that we want to do as opposed to them coming to us and saying this is the book we want you to write yeah which yep. does happen so all the time most most large publishing houses basically tell you what to write right so uh alton brown i was working on a show called cutthroat kitchen um a lot it's been six seven years ago now mm -hmm. and um he was he literally was my a mentor to me we had 100 episodes of tv together these are 12 hour days and uh, I and I literally was like I he would give me one on one coaching. We would watch my social media or our social media videos, and he would literally break down what I did right, what I did wrong. So I had two Food Network fathers. Alton Brown would give me one on one time, and Bobby Flay and I would sit over a meal, and he would just he'd give me business coaching. So um, so those again, are your two dads. Those are my two dads. Those are my two two Food Network dads. Right. Um, Anyway, I'm, I'm, we're trying to keep you awake, but want to give you all the good information. Ali goes to, wait, before culinary school, how we met, how we re-met. We were not romantic during those Sir Latab times at all. It was not like a, hey, could I get your number? Uh, either way, all right? Um, so from Sir Latab, I went to Las Vegas. I opened a hotel called Encore. And then one night, I'm working service, right? Uh, and then chef, the, the, here's the story. Um, my server walks in. It's a, it's a crushing night. I'm probably on my 15th hour. I'm ready to go home. I want to get these last tickets off the board. I want to get the heck out of there and go home. So you guys rolled in late, like 10 o'clock or something like that, because they're about to go to the club, I think, right? Um, and they're like, Chef, table 13, I have, a, I have a guest that wants to say hello to you. And like you hear that all the time in Vegas, right? And I'm like, I'm literally on the board like this. I'm good. Just say thank you. <laughs> Chef went to the bathroom. He went somewhere. He's not happening. And then um, my servant like, Chef, they're pretty hot. <laughs> and I was like, oh, really? Okay. Let me like get myself together. Yeah. Right? And I'm like, I walk out to the table. And the first thing you said to me was, I don't know if you remember me, but I took your classes at Sir Latab, and it was like deer in the headlights. Like you did not say Sir Latab; it was loaded. You were like, I don't know if you remember me <laughs> from last night. Yeah, exactly. Just kidding. Just kidding. No, you're not. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so uh, I, well, you know, it was instant, right? I brought Ali back for a kitchen tour. Well, wait, he oh, said, he said, would you like a kitchen tour? Wow. I, I didn't know I was that smooth. That's pretty awesome. I was, I was already exhausted by then. So um, uh, any chefs have worked in restaurants in here for multiple years? So in Vegas, the lighting is very, like, clubby, right? So it's a chef move. You're like, come into the back of house where it's super bright. And I'm like, oh, yeah, she's super hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah under the know. fluorescent lights in the back yeah. because that's where you look your best. Exactly. So... <laughs> Um, the short of this story is it was instant for, for me. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to speak for us, you. For both of us. Uh, so, yeah, we re-met, married, and Allie was pregnant within a year and a half. 18 months of that. So when you know, you know. Uh, I knew right away. We got to work fast. So I called my mom. I wouldn't even tell. We wouldn't, wouldn't tell our moms we're getting married. We are going to elope. Yeah. So we were You guys are now getting the real good. Yeah, yeah. No, right I figured now. this, this is, is, the this real is family good. talk. 
you should know what's going on. This will live forever online. Um, so all your exes and mine are be like, what the hell? <laughs> anyway, um, so so that's our story. Uh, let's get to cooking. Does that sound good? We're here for you. We'll do whatever you want. One on one epic. Um, am I talking too much? You no, just make me go show for up. it. All right. Fundamental. Ali as an educator and me and, and myself as an educator. Uh, let's get down to brass tacks. Cooking is broken down into two fundamental techniques, moist heat or dry heat. That's it. If you think about it, right? We wanted to teach people that you, we're going to teach you how to roast something. You're going to be able to roast everything. We're going to teach you how to saute something. You're going to saute everything, right? So the first few pages is the Tila dogma, right? Brown food tastes good, right? You got to get use high heat. You're either... So let's break it down, team. Dry heat or moist heat? Name one example of dry heat for me. Roasting. Roasting. Absolutely. One, now, one example of moist heat. Braising. Poaching, braising. You see what I'm saying? So when people are like, I can't cook, you got to break it down to its fundamentals. Beyond those fundamentals, we want to give you chef tips that are, you're going to take and apply across the board. Allie, you have this fancy word for it. Scaffolding. Scaffold. Right? I don't know what the hell that okay. means. Can you explain that, please? So as an educator, in education, they teach you how to scaffold skills. And that's what we want to do here. So we want to take basic techniques and teach you how to generalize them throughout your cooking, as opposed to saying, I'm going to teach you how to make a souffle. And that you, you learn that only for that one recipe. But if you understand how to make, like, for example, a meringue to fold into a souffle, you can fold those into flowers and make a macaron. You can... Um, you, there, there are countless, cakes, yeah, whatever. you can fold it into the uh, sponge jacon base of, of like the lemon bar in the book. Um, so, so there are tons of different, different avenues you can use that for. So 101 was a play off 101, like education. 101 is 101 recipes. So this, this book is your 365 day three meal book because you've got breakfast, you got lunch, You've got proteins broken down, you have desserts broken down, and you have sides. So that's how this thing works. It's a super cookable book. Um, and you can use it every day. It's not a tom. It's not a textbook. It's, it's no. a nice, easy... It's fun. Easy to use, easy to read. Yeah. Because cooking book, should be fun, right? It, yeah, it's the book that you're going to be like, oh, I, I, you can buy this in, for any occasion for anyone anywhere in their life. So, Allie, what are you making today? Let's switch places. I'm interviewing right. And I'm going to be the interviewer now. You're so gonna we're going to make the coconut chia pudding. This is the easiest recipe ever. You're going to love that. Um, I make this all the time in the evening with the kids because I can make it as I'm doing like 10 other things. So um, what was your inspiration for this? Dude? I think that's a fun story. So I love Republic. Absolutely. Walter one Mansky, of my, well, the Mansky, Marge Mansky, Marge Mansky. one of my favorite restaurants. Yeah. Absolutely. In the city. They make a coconut chia pudding, and I, of course, they're not going to be like, here's my recipe. So um, I, I went home, and I decided, okay, I'm going to develop my own. Um, and I know that they were using coconut cream in theirs. So I tried to develop something that was similar, and I think it's pretty close. Um, but, you know, I also put my own little twist here and there on it. Let's do it. Let's do it. So the first thing you're going to do is take about a half a cup of your chia seeds. Chia so seeds. Hard. Is that a Melissa's thing? Absolutely. You betcha it is. <laughs> you betcha it is. And a little bit of almond milk, vanilla flavored. I think chia seeds have been around in Latin America since the 1600s. I was your ends Good. Uh, question. I like sweetened. Okay. Yeah. Feel um, free to go on if you want. Right now, I don't. I don't like to make this too sweet because we're gonna drizzle drizzle some honey on top at the end. So you don't want like sweet on sweet. So I like to make the chia actually a little bit more creamy, and then use the honey for the sweetness in here. So just give it a stir. You want to try to submerge all the seeds, and then you gotta walk away. You gotta walk away, but not <laughs> walk here. Walk away. We're not gonna walk away here. Um, and then with a little bit of like TV magic. Oh, suddenly it's 30 minutes later yeah. so chia as you know is hydrophobic it absorbs 12 times its weight in water i know alan brown and i are good friends so i'm sorry that's why we're good friends we would sit around and nerd out for thousands of hours it would either be food nerding or like what's the best gun for the zombie apocalypse yeah exactly that's one, that's one or the other true story uh, true, true story, story. 
absorbs 12 times its weight in liquid, and then it gets this gelatinous kind of beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Chias are extremely nutritious, very, very nutritious food, protein, fat, carbs, all in one tiny little package. And I, I mean, it reminds me a little bit of tiny tapioca pudding. Yeah. You know? So you can see that it's thickened up here after about 30 minutes. You want to stir it occasionally because it'll tend to clump up. Yeah, that's a nice whisk. Is that a mat for whisk? Well, I've that's got my handy dandy go. mat for whisk here. Anyway, plug. Yeah. Questions on chia. I will repeat that for you, you and YouTube land. No. Nope. So then. Yeah. Uh, okay, I actually never really measure this. Um, except for the recipe. <laughs> except for the recipe, but I like to use the the top layer of the coconut cream. Like that's the really good stuff, the thick stuff. You know. So you want to just well, that is stir nice in, right? right Look at that. That's yeah. beautiful. That's exactly how I like it. And just stir it in. So the question you is, can. can you use coconut milk? Yeah, you can. And if you don't like coconut, you can replace the amounts of coconut cream with some yogurt and, and yeah. make it the same way. This is accidentally uh, plant-based. It's not, <laughs> wasn't on purpose. It just tastes better with almond and coconut in our opinion. Yeah. So there's no reason you can't sub out a milk, a, mm -hmm. a, a cow milk, uh, and then uh, and cream. There's there's no reason. Yeah, I mean, get creative, you know. Wow, and that's it. I mean, it picks well, up all its texture. I'm saying from from just like soaking. Yeah, I mean, look how creamy it is. Yeah, you know, Vanessa, beautiful. The question is, have you tried it with oat milk? I haven't, but I think it would probably work just fine. With as oat long milk as the too. viscosity is similar to yeah. the, the, the the almond milk, which is like any other non-heavy cream milk it's gonna work fine um, so what do you got there a little vanilla bean paste and i mean this is kind of a sidebar but like this is my favorite spoon <laughs> ever i love these they're heat proof so i can make like a, a caramel or something and shh, doesn't melt i love it matt for yet again there you go um, um so yeah give it a little bit of whisk so you, vanilla you like bean vanilla paste. bean you like vanilla bean yeah, I mean, yeah. you can use vanilla extract. I think that's what we used in the book. But whenever, I don't know, I, I use vanilla bean paste as much as possible. I just feel like it gives it a better flavor. Excellent. But, you know, I mean, it's e a little easier to find. Faye, ask away and I'll repeat your question. Oh, would you say it's an American recipe? I would say that it has uh, grown in popularity in the last few years here in America. I think chia comes from obviously Latin America but it's a really great adoption of another ingredient, like quinoa as well. Like, geez, potatoes came from Peru. So I would say this application is an American recipe. I'd go further to say it's super hipster. How does that sound? <laughs> it's very, very Brooklyn, very Echo Parky. Talk to me, Alex. All right, so pop this in the fridge for a couple of hours. I like to do that to let it really thicken up because that's how I like my chia. I have a question as a cook, if I never made this before. Will it continue to get thicker as it goes? And See, well, what's my limit to how long I can hold that chia? To a point. I mean, I think you can hold chia for like five to seven days. Perfect. And if it, if it thickens up, guess what you can do? Thin it out. Exactly. It's not rocket science. Yeah. It's just cooking. That's yeah, what this, this whole is book a, is about. This is a super user-friendly recipe. I love that texture. Yeah. Because it really mimics the, 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 the gelatinization really mimics heavy cream. Yeah. It almost mimics like... Super not, not good for you stuff when it's super good for you. Oh, it's you the know, best recipe for kids. I love this because it, in the summer you want coconut, you want, you know, so it's kind of tropical a little bit. Um, I don't know what honey they used in here, but, but it's, delicious. it's awesome. What did you use, Ida, chef? Tupelo. It really complements the coconut well. So I'm going to, I'm going to. We're stealing I'm gonna, it. Yeah, I'm going to be We're stealing, stealing that. It. Uh, um, you can put that. You can use this as a breakfast. We we give this to the kids just this way for breakfast. They love it. You can you can also layer chia into desserts. Like you can put chia with a little tapioca. I, I once had a dessert that had chia tapioca, a little bit of granita, and some crumbled cookie, almost like a parfait. It was it was awesome. Beautiful. So it's it's really versatile. Yeah. So you just want to like drizzle it on the top there. Yummer. What a nice coating of honey. Nice close up HD wise right there. I mean, our kids like to eat the honey off the top and then go, I want more honey. <laughs> Any questions? Happy to answer them as we go through because I can't ask. I'm an inter I'm an interviewer as well. So um, this honey seems to have almost like a bergamot flavor. Yeah. Almost like a 
um, like a, what you call it, tea? Help me out here, foodies. Like a jasmine tea. Earl Grey. Yeah, it has a very Earl Grey kind of note to it. Oh, it is. Yeah. It's a regional honey, so it's picking up oh, the flowers. It's really good. Flavor from wherever it is. It's, it's amazing. So yeah. then just a little bit of flake coconut. If you want a little more complexity, toast your coconut. Yeah. I toast everything. I think it's You just... should toast anything. Spices, seeds, nuts, you should toast it all. In all our right. recipe, we toast the almonds. A little bit of almond on there for a little bit of crunch. Nice. And then just some berries, you know? And whatever's in season. Yeah, any seasonal fruit. Where's Robert, the fruit encyclopedia? <laughs> What's in season right now? What would be awesome here? We have strawberries yeah, right now that, that are amazing. We're, 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 we're in uber berries. We're moving into stones. Oh, yeah, starting to come out right now. So make this a base for uh, a, fr a fruit bomb or yeah. a breakfast or also a dessert. I think it's a phenomenal. And it's and a there it's you plant go. base. There it is, Allie. Yeah. Hold it up. There we go. There, there it is. Give Allie her moment and get out of her shot. No. <laughs> Stay, your in your shot. Stay in your shot. Uh, it's it going to slide off, so I, I can only tip it. Like maybe, I don't know if that helps. All right. We'll give you... We'll, there's a beautiful photo in that cookbook you're going to buy. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, exactly. Questions, folks? Questions? Ali, you tell me how to field questions. I'm going to set up my demo. Any Chia questions? It's so easy, right? I was actually just going to say that, and I'm not, I was not, this is not an endorsement, but their clean snacks, their coconut clean snacks, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's, per it's perfect. Oh yeah, right? the Melissa's coconut clean snacks would be a great uh, yeah. uh, addition or topping to this. All righty, that was breakfast. Who cooks more at home, you cure ass? Allie, who cooks more at home? Uh, you know, I think we both cook. <laughs> <laughs> who cooks more at home? Yeah, <laughs> who cooks more at home? Savory or pastry. Oh, close. Oh. Wow. Oh. Out, out of 21 meal possibilities, seven yeah. days a week, three meals a day, who do you think makes more meals? More savory or pastry. Mm -hmm. Overall meal. Who was eating my granola Overall yesterday? Meal. Okay. Homemade granola. Brown Clearly, butter granola. Clearly, I'm not going to win. I'm just going to say Allie cooks all the meals at home. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. No, the <laughs> truth is Jet cooks a lot of the meals and because he travels a lot, so he'll cook the cut pasta or he'll make whatever and we backpack it and then the kids and I have some of his fresh homemade food when he's traveling. There it is. Thank you, Allie. You want to switch positions with me? You can help me. You can be yeah. my sous chef. Uh, help me out, chef, if you don't mind. There we go. That's all I want. Like a nice medium. All right, folks. Uh, so in these last decade, one of my jobs is working with, uh, other than like Melissa's, I also have another few national companies that I work with. And I do a lot of ideation, uh, recipe creation, concept creation. And um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, we're in my, I'm in my mid forties and I'm starting to realize my body is changing because I'm not able to exercise as much as I want to because of time. Um, I worked uh, in a hotel in Vegas for a man who went, plant-based I started working with a plant-based chef and I'm just starting to really understand like I could take medicine or I could eat better and lose some weight and try not to take medicine right um so veggies and like you know I grew up in a house where we had a lot of fruits and vegetables but um my good grand job, Mary. Good, good job Mary good job don't give her credit it's her mom, it's her, mom. <laughs> her mom cooked all the veggies uh, and, but I, and my grandma was not a good communicator. She was a phenomenal cook, but always was like, do it like I do. Never the why. And all her measurements were in finger increments, right? Never made any sense. So, um, so my journey has been really understanding how to, how to cook things like my grandma cooked them. And uh, it really comes down to super basics. At the end of the day, vegetables don't be kind and ginger with them in order to make them sweet and delicious torture them all right <laughs> vegetables need aggressive cooking to be appreciated to pull out all the sugars and all the textures 
uh, it's dry heat. End of the day. Grilling, roasting, aggressive sauteing. So um, cauliflower steak, real simple. Uh, the, the, tick, the tip to getting a cauliflower steak, right, a nice symmetrical piece, a wedge out of here is don't cut this straight up and down because the cauliflower is a, is a half round. So you're not doing this. You're doing this. Does that make sense? So the first cut, I'm always going to look at the core to kind of tell me where to go. And you're only going to get two nice steaks out of a cauliflower, period. All right. Everything else is going to be trim. So I'm going to never come in straight. I'm going to come in at a slight angle for my first cut. And I know I'm going to get florets and I'm not going to ever throw that away. Right. But I'm going to use that and roast that for something. So I'm at top dead center. So my, my knife can slightly be at an angle at top dead center. And I'm going to get a symmetrical wedge now. Does that make sense? I'm going to get two of these. So this is not going to be straight up and down. I'm going to angle that knife slightly. And I'm going to get two gorgeous florets out of, out of here. I mean, two gorgeous steaks. I could probably do something with that uh, that's uh, pretty for the plate. But this is going to be uh, in a restaurant setting. I would make this part of like another cauliflower dish or side or grate it down. But here are my two gorgeous opportunities right here. And again, please ask questions because your question is probably going to be in the audience mind as well. And they, they can't answer them. So... Um, what do I do now? Massively aggressive cooking technique. Um, so if I'm going to roast them on a sheet, I would preheat this sheet to about 400 to 450 degrees. Well, why would you do that? Uh, because I'm trying to create a saute pan from the oven. And once I throw this, once this pan comes out of the oven smoking hot, I get a little olive oil, salt and pepper on here. I get it on the, it's searing on one side. And then I'm going to have the hot air do the rest. So, so that's how I'm going to do it. And if I'm going to do uh, a, a party in a restaurant, I would do a ton of these. But if I'm going to cook for a group, I would make one each, always plus 20%. I'm always like, you know what I mean? That's my usual go-to. Those of you that cater or cook for groups, I'm always going to be 20% over. Okay? Um, so, but I'm going to do it in a saute pan this time. Can I have olive oil, salt, and pepper, please? Then again, I'm here, answer, ask questions. Um, because what is what are vegetables? You guys have, a lot of you have heard me lecture the five flavor rule, right? So you already know it. Hot, sour, salty, sweet, right? And savory. What do vegetables lack? In to, like natively lack? Do they? Oh, they do if you don't torture them. Once we torture them, the sweetness comes out. They lack... Fat. So I added fat. They lack, someone else said it, salt. So I'm coaxing more flavor out of it, right? What else do they lack? Pepper. They lack spice, <laughs> don't they? They lack spice, don't they? So I want you to learn how to treat vegetables like meat. This is no different than a chicken breast, a chicken thigh, a filet, a gorgeous piece of meat. And I'm literally treating a piece of fish the same way. I'm oiling it aggressively. I'm getting seasoning on there. That's why I, how I want you to treat veggies, all right? I'm preheating a cast iron pan. I love cast iron, by the way, all right? And another tip, it's in the book. May I see my favorite cooking thing ever in the kitchen? This is my number one used cooking fat in every kitchen. I have olive oil. I have a high temperature uh, neutral oil for salt, really high searing. Man, I use this for everything. Not this brand, not pitching this yellow can brand, any of those brands, but I'm, I'm pitching this because five calories per second because I'm always thinking. Does that make sense? And nothing is going to cover a pan so evenly. It just doesn't exist. So one of my favorite things, olive oil here for flavor. So um, And then if I'm, if I'm doing a bunch, again, I'm going to use the, the pan. But I'm going to show you, again, I want you to cook. I'm going to, the, I'm going to go over to the stove now. I want you to cook vegetables like you cook meat, right? And uh, I'm going to get this thing going at the same time. Can I answer any questions? I feel like, uh, am, am I just preaching to the choir? Faye, talk to me. 
Agridoce is completely Italian. Anyone speak any of the Romance languages? Dulce. Thank you. Agria. Huh? Sour. It's just sweet and sour sauce. I know it sounds all sexy and, and amazing, but it's just sweet and sour sauce. So um, we're seeing a trend. Like, so I, again, I'm 20, 30 years in the business. One of the things that I'm tasked to do every year is to report and demonstrate on trends, right? So uh, this lens, this plays itself to multiple trends. Number one trend is going to be plant-based, right? Again, but I don't want it to taste plant-based. I want stuff to be delicious. I almost cursed. I'm so sorry, Robert. Um, I'm so I'm so passionate. Um, number two trend is uh, sweet and spicy, and agua dulce is sweet and spicy. Preheated the pan and check it out. Uh, you could use oil, but I already have that pre-oiled. I just want this to really. I wanted the pan to have a little lubrication before I lay down the cauliflower. And I'm just going to leave that alone while I do agua dulce. Um, so you know the sweet and sour part. I have uh, red wine vinegar. I have balsamic vinegar. And remember, there's different grades of vinegar, just like there's different grades of fruit, different grades of anything. I really want you to, if you're using the not so nice stuff, you can play with it by add, bumping it with a little sugar. I'm gonna use a little dry chili flake and I'm gonna let that come up. But here's the secret, golden raisins. I want those to plump up in there and create a beautiful glaze. You're like, Jet, don't have time. Too fancy. <laughs> Get the fancy, the thickened stuff already. What flavor is this primarily? Super sweet. <laughs> good, it's good. It is good, right? So uh, if this is already predominantly sweet and not really acid. Bump it with a little acid. Get your grapes in there. You know what I mean by grapes, right? And uh, get your um, and get some other flavors in there, and you have this beautiful glaze. So, yep. Uh, all right, where where are those? Where's this this fancy uh, thing? So, I don't want you to get locked into time. I want you to use five senses when you cook. Visually, you see what's going on. The nose tells you when things are burning and when things are hot enough. Feel right gives you uh, uh, an idea of doneness. Does that make sense? And I want you to be comfortable to work between a pan and an oven. Does that make sense? Because they should, depending on how much food you need to cook, they should work together, right? Uh, so, and how many, how many sides of food are visible to uh, on a plate? One. So make one side like supermodel gorgeous. And then just worry about the doneness and seasoning around that. Does that make sense? That's why a sheet pan in the oven is great for cooking a ton really fast. But if I'm really worried about visuals, I would start the browning in a pan like this. And that's aggressive. If you can see, this is beyond smoke point, right? I would basically start them here. I don't want to go too long. And then so for sake of time, I'm going to bring this pan back to my first position just so you can get an idea. And then do one of these guys. And if in a restaurant setting or in a, at a party, if when my mom comes over for dinner and Ali mom comes over for dinner, we have seven or eight, I'll do 10. I'll do this about 3 p.m. or now. And then about, let's say we're eating a dinner at six, I'll pop these in at 5.30, 5.45. So they're done perfect. Does that make sense? Yes, Anita. 100%. I could take this pan and go right into the oven if I'm doing it a la minute, if, I need, if I'm doing it now for service. Does that make sense? So, or I'm like, or I'm like, I'm the one guy cooking, Ali's making dessert, we have eight people coming over for dinner. I'm going to get this done out, meat done out, ready to go. Everything goes in the oven 30 minutes before, and people were like, oh my God, it smells so good in here. And we're like, we know. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, it looks like two people cooked a meal that takes 10 people. All those techniques are in this book. Does that make sense? Understanding cooking more like from a chef's point of view than a home cook's point of view. Our job is to get you to this point. But this, is it going to get darker in the oven? For sure. So I want to take it three-quarter way and let the oven yield it and get it, get it nice and soft. So 
Um, questions? Agrodolce is reducing. You guys want to see cheating Agrodolce? If you're like, hell yeah, I cheat all the time on food. Are you kidding? Um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. Anyway, can we take questions really quick? I know Robert's like going, no questions, but I will do it. Yes. 